hi friends so in this video we shall be discussing regarding your arterial disorders so we begin our discussion with the arterial stenosis and occlusion so what is the most common cause the most common cause is your atherosclerosis right then what are your features of your chronic limb arterial occlusion or stenosis it presents to you with intermittent claudication rest pain ulcer gangrene or sunset foot which is your dependent ruber arterial brood and arterial pulsation which is usually diminished right so let's understand each of this concept subsequently but the symptoms and sign usually relate to the organ supplied by the artery for example the lower limb they would present to you with claudication breast pain and gangrene in case of brain it would present to you with transient ischemic attack and stroke in myocardium it would present to you with angina and your myocardial infarction and intestine it would present to you with abdominal pain and your infarction now the first concept that we discuss is regarding your intermittent claudication so what is your intermittent claudication this is a result of your anaerobic muscle metabolism so it is a cramp like pain that is brought on by walking right it is not present on taking your first so if it is not present on taking on by the first step it differentiates it from osteoarthritis now it is relieved by taking rest for less than 5 minutes now in contrast if differentiate from your nerve disorders or your spinal stenosis right causing nerve compression for which rest is more than 5 minutes required right so your intermittent claudication is relieved on taking rest by 5 minutes whereas in cases of spinal stenosis which is causing your nerve compression you need a longer duration of rest usually more than 5 minutes now the muscle group affected by claudication is generally one level below the level of claudication and the most common affected artery is your superficial femoral artery now this presents you with your posterior calf pain right so this is about your intermittent claudication now moving down to the next concept which is of rest pain so what is your rest pain it is the continu continuous dull type of pain which is not relieved by the usual dose of your analgesics and this pain usually persists for more than your 14 days right that is your 2 weeks now coming down to the next uh, concept regarding your ulceration and gangrene so ulceration occurs when there is severe arterial insufficiency and this is your image showing your gangrene of your great toe okay. now the next concept that we discuss shall be of critical limb ischemia so what is your critical limb ischemia please uh, look at this term it is critical and not chronic so it is a persistently recurring rest pain requiring analgesia for more than of 2 weeks or ulceration or gangrene of foot or toes so either one of them has to be present with an ankle systolic pressure less than 50 mm of hg or toe systolic pressure of less than 30 mm of hg right so this is your definition for critical limb ischemia now 
Moving down to the next important question that is asked is regarding your relationship of your clinical findings to the site of obstruction. So if it is an iotoiliac obstruction, they have claudication in buttocks, thigh and calves, femoral and distal pulses, is, uh, pulses absent in both limb, brie over the iotoiliac region and impotence which is your Leridge syndrome. Then in case of your iliac obstruction, you have your unilateral claudication in the thigh and calf and sometimes in the buttock, brewing over the iliac region and unilateral absence of your femoral and distal pulses. In cases of your femoropopulatal obstruction, you have your unilateral claudication in calf, femoral pulse palpable with absent distal pulses. And in case of distal obstruction, you have femoral popliteal pulse palpable, ankle pulses are absent and claudication is present in calf and foot. So this table of yours is going to help you to solve the clinical scenarios when it is given to you on the basis of the site of the obstruction. Look at the symptoms and you can determine the level of the obstruction. Now regarding your investigation, we do a Doppler, an ultrasound. So in handheld Doppler, you will find that the S1, S2, S3 are decreased and there will be a continuous harm. Then ABPI is your ankle brachial pressure index, which can be measured, which we shall discuss subsequently. And the duplex scan will give us idea about the level of block, status of collaterals, calcification of walls, regurgitation and flow if any present and regarding your flow velocity. Also the Doppler is going to suggest regarding the change in your pattern. The normal pattern is usually your triphasic pattern. So if there is any change in the pattern that can be detected on your Doppler flow. Right. And now regarding your ABPI, ankle brachial pressure index. Now this is a ratio of your highest pressure in your dorsalis pedis posterior tibial artery or the perineal artery to your highest brachial systolic pressure. So you can take a look at this diagram over here, a handheld Doppler probe and a sphygmomanometer to determine systolic pressure in the dorsalis pedis artery as part of assessing your ankle brachial pressure index. So what are your values of this ABPI? The normal value is your 0.9 to 1.4. Now, if the values is less than 0 0.4, then it is suggestive of your chronic threatening limb ischemia. Now, if the score is more than 1.4, it is suggestive of diabetes mellitus, which occurs due to the calcification of your vessel walls and a flow limiting disease is suggested when there is more than 20% drop in ABI after your exercise. Right. So these are your few important points with respect to your ankle brachial pressure index. Now an important classification over here is your Fontaine classification where stage 1 says no symptom, stage 2 is your intermittent claudication, stage 3 is your rest pain and stage 4 is your ulcer or gangrene. So please remember the rest pain in your Fontaine classification is your stage 3. Now this intermittent classification claudication has another classification which is your boys classification. So in grade 1 we have pain starts after walking some distance and pain disappears and the patient continues to walk. In case of grade 2, the pain persists and the patient walks with effort. In case of 3, it is pain compels the patient to take rest and grade 4 is your rest pain. So it is stage classific uh, stage 3 rest pain in Fontaine classification whereas it is stage 4 in your Boyd's classification. Now coming down to another classification that is used for chronic limb ischemia is your Rutherford classification. We shall also look at the Rutherford classification subsequently for your acute limb ischemia. So over here we have 0 as no symptoms, 1 as mild symptom, 2 as moderate symptoms, 3 as severe symptom, 4 as rest pain, then 5 you have minor tissue loss and 6 is your major tissue loss. 
So this is with respect to your Rutherford classification for chronic limb ischemia. Now, this is one of the most common question that is asked in your exam regarding your uh, clinical scenario based with respect to your Berger disease. So this is a vasculitis which involve your medium and small vessels. So it can involve the both upper limb and lower limb. Now it involves arteries plus veins plus nerves, right. Now there is a criteria which gives a clue to the diagnosis of your Berger disease which is your Shinoya criteria. Now this is an onset before the age of 50 years. Smoking must be present then there should be an infra popliteal uh, arterial occlusion then there should be an upper lip involvement and absence of atherosclerotic factors other than smoking should be present right so when you are given a clinical scenarios and on the basis of Shinoya criteria it would form your diagnosis of whether it is a Berger disease or not now moving down to the next important concept is well for your dry gangrene as well uh, versus wet gangrene. Now this line of demarcation is clear in your dry gangrene whereas it is vague in your wet gangrene. Then your tissue appears to be dry, shriveled and mummified in dry gangrene whereas it is edematous, putrefied and discolored in your wet gangrene. Then the loss of blood supply is your slow and a gradual blood supply loss in your dry gangrene whereas in case of wet gangrene it is a sudden loss. Then ulceration is usually aseptic in dry gangrene and septic in wet gangrene. Then the amputation is a limited amputation in case of a dry gangrene whereas in case of wet gangrene you would usually need a higher level of amputation. Then the causes it would be atherosclerosis or thrombongitis obliterans or Berger disease in case of your dry gangrene whereas in case of wet gangrene it would be your embolism or trauma. Now regarding your management so if we have a confirmed peripheral arterial disease and no functional disability a follow-up of the patient should suffice whereas if the patient has a lifestyle symptom a lifestyle limiting symptom then a supervised exercise program and a pharmacological therapy is started that is your celastazole. Now a three month trial is usually given if it improves then we just follow the patient if there is a significant disability then we might need your endovascular or your surgical revascularization. Now if you have the life limiting symptoms with the evidence of inflow disease so over here your further anatomic delineation in form of angiography and other non-invasive technique needs to be done and the patient might need your endovascular therapy. So this is your flow chart which would help you to solve your questions with respect to your management of your peripheral arterial disease. Now moving down to the next concept of your acute limb ischemia, please remember that it is an emergency condition and it is usually caused by your embolic arterial occlusion or trauma. Now we have this classification of your Rutherford classification of acute limb ischemia. So if you look at the grade 1, it is a viable, there is no sensory loss, no motor deficit, Doppler signals are audible and there is no immediate threat to the patient. Now in case of grade 2a, it is marginally threatened, there is a minimal sensory loss, no motor deficit, arterial sounds are inaudible whereas venous is audible and it is salvageable if promptly treated. In case of stage 2b, it is immediately threatened, there is sensory loss more than toes, a mild to moderate motor deficit and now inaudible arterial and audible venous and salvageable with immediate revascularization. Right. And in your grade 3, we have irreversible that is profound or insensate and paralyzed motor deficit. Arterial is inaudible, the venous is inaudible and over here you would require a amputation. Right. So your investigations would include your ECG to detect myocardial infarction and atrial fibrillation. Right. I'll just write it down for you. Myocardial infarction atrial fibrillation 
then creatinine ki uh, kinase because of rhabdomyolysis renal failure renal function as rhabdomyolysis might cause your renal failure and your imaging assessment of your affected limb now the treatment would include your immediate administration of 5000 international units of heparin that reduce your thrombus extension and maintain the potency of your surrounding vessels now following this the patient would either require an embolectomy or a thrombolysis right so now we end our discussion with two important tables one is your indications for carotid and arterectomy in your symptomatic patient so it is 50 percent or greater carotid stenosis and ipsilateral amaurosis figax or monoleuca blindness contralateral facial paralysis or paresthesia arm or leg paralysis or paresthesia hemianopia dysphasia and sensory or visual inattention or neglect so these are your indications for your carotid and arterectomy and one more important table is regarding your amputations so what are your indications for your amputations you have your dead limb which is your gangrene then you have your deadly limb which is your wet gangrene spreading cellulitis arteriovenous fistula and malignancy then your dead loss limb which is your severe rest pain with unreconstructable critical like ischemia paralysis and other causes like contracture on trauma so this is all with respect to your arterial disorders